Thermal product treatment needs to be both ultra-dependable and maximally energy efficient. Krohn's offers a persuasively effective solution in the shape of its tubular heat exchangers. The components. In the aseptic buffer tank, the product is kept in readiness and made available to the filling and packaging line as needed. The product deaerator. The aim here is to have a product that is maximally free of oxygen, thus avoiding any impact of flavors or colors. Now the tubular heat exchanger, in this case for outputs of up to 10 cubic meters an hour. Three central modules are accommodated on just a single frame. On the left of the picture is the media module with its pressure resistant product tank. It decouples the system hydraulically from the supply network during production and during intermediate rinsing and cleaning routines. On the right is the energy module, which controls the supply of heating medium to the tubes. In this case, steam is converted into hot water for ultra-gentle heating of the product concerned. The cooling media, like glycol or ice water for the final cooler, are also connected to the energy module here. Behind the media and energy modules is the tube module, in which the product is heated up or cooled down in a counter-current configuration using the various media involved. All three modules are compactly accommodated on just a single frame. In the center is the control cabinet. On the right of the picture is the panel, in this case for switching over to two retention times. On the left of the picture is the panel for the de-aerator and the homogenizer. Now we come to the different sections of the tubular heat exchanger for thermal product treatment. We start with the first pre-warming zone, which is regenerative in design. An indirect water circulation feature on the secondary side of the heater warms up the product with maximized energy economy. The second pre-warming stage is also regenerative in design. The relatively hot water from the heater is passed via an indirect water circulation feature to the colder product, transferring its heat from its hot self to the cold product in a counter-current configuration. In this case, the energy recovery rate obtained is about 85%. The second pre-warming is followed by the heater, which brings the product up to its final temperature, at which it enters the heat holding section. After this heat holding section comes the first cooler, once again a regenerative design. This is followed by the second cooler. Now we see the product flowing through the tubular heat exchanger, as exemplified by pre-warmer 1. On the right, you can see the product inside the tube. The heating medium is outside, colored red, in a counter-current configuration and without using any additional energy, the product is now very gently heated up. Here we see an interior view of the tube. The product is transferred from one tube to another through a bend. In a detailed analysis, what interests us now is what flow phenomena are actually taking place inside the tube concerned so as to warm up and cool down the product as gently and effectively as possible. Here is the flow for a product with low viscosity in a plain tube. The laminar barrier is thin, while the heat transfer is very good. Now we see a high viscous product in a plain tube and a very thick laminar barrier. The heat transfer is here significantly poorer by reason of different velocities and different temperature layers. The poor heat transfer achieved means that the product is not being adequately treated. Now we're looking at a high viscous product in a single corrugated tube. The design of this tube causes the laminar layer to break up thus producing a medium, moderate heat transfer, because the turbulences are not strong enough. Now the same function in a cross-corrugated tube. The product is once again high viscous. The laminar layer of the edge of the tube is very comprehensive. Despite the low turbulence flow, very good heat transfer is achieved.
you can now see the counter current configuration with the medium flowing on the outside. The advantages of a system featuring a tubular heat exchanger can be summed up as follows. Treatment of the product is absolutely gentle and microbiologically safe. In terms of viscosity, maximized flexibility is assured, not least by the combination of plain tubes and cross-corrugated tubes. This is vital for the ability to cope with viscosity spreads ranging from water viscous to highly viscous products. In addition, the combination of plain and cross-corrugated tubes provides great flexibility in terms of output adjustment. The system can be regulated from 10 to 3 cubic meters an hour, which means that both large and small containers can be handled at the filler without any intermediate displacement operations. With this output category, 3,000 to 10,000 liters an hour, Crohn's can now supply product to filling lines for pet containers or beverage cartons in the low output range as well. Crohn's also, of course, offers thermal product treatment systems in the medium and high output ranges, 15, 30, 45 to 60 cubic meters an hour. By reason of the sizes involved, of course, the media interface, the tube module and the energy module are designed as separate units. Excellent maintenance is assured in both the high and low output ranges due to the very good accessibility to the individual components like pumps and seals.